All right, this is a different kind of video. It's to help give you an introduction to our group presentations at the midterm. So we're right here in the semester right now. We're in week seven out of 16 weeks. Our uh, projects continue for a while, but then in week nine, which starts on October 23rd, at least half the class is gonna be taken up with your group presentations. So, so that we have some time to be thinking about it, to finding examples, to working with our group members outside of class on it, and talking to them and checking in in class, I wanted to introduce it now so you can all pick your themes. So to do that, we're going to go to Unit Module 8, even though we're still working through 7 with our animation project. So if you go to the Group Presentation Module, <clears throat> You're going to see that the goal for this is to work with your group members to choose a unique presentation topic. It'd be great if we can get that done today. That means no group can present on the same thing. You're going to review the past student examples and assignment sheet. Uh, and you're going to create an editable Google Slides presentation. And you're going to add my Google address, which is right here, as a collaborator on that or an editor on that. And I have a video that shows how you can set that up. And then you're going to work on and complete the group pre midterm presentation to be presented on October 25th. Now, some of you are public speakers. Some of you are good writers. Some of you are computer literate. Some of you are responsible leaders. All those talents are needed. You don't need to all speak, but you might choose to all speak, right? You do all need to contribute. You don't need to all write, but you might want to all write within the presentation. But there's five components to it. So if you look at this assignment sheet, you can download it. It's a one page PDF. For the five points you get, five percentage points for the class, two more than you get for any assignment, right? This is how you get those points. The first is to have, you know, around 10 to 15 images for a presentation that will last 10 to 15 minutes, right? It's all in this general description. So I'll just read through it. As a group, you will curate a themed show of digital art that you find interesting, educational, and engaging. The theme can be based on a subject matter that the group is interested in researching, uh, i.e. fantasy animals, retro graphics, futuristic technology, comic books, or on a specific digital technique that they would like to explore. Vector renderings, 3D modeling, motion graphics. A group from the morning class is interested in exploring uh, the interactions between this program called Grease Pencil and Blender, which is a 3D modeling animation software. And so they're going to be showcasing artists that use those two together and then helping the class understand what these programs can do. So it's a really specific one, but pretty cool. And what that actually can do is take 3D models and turn them into 2D cell animation, which is kind of an interesting approach to it. Anyway. I'll show you some uh, possible topics as well, but you can always come up with your own topic. The presentation should include 10 to 15 images. That means digital artworks that you show the class and should last between 10 and 15 minutes. We do not want to go over 15 minutes. Research the art objects and the process by which they were made. So you don't want to show us things that you have no idea about that you just thought were cool. You want to show us things that you've found out, you know, who the artist was, what programs made it, and can make at least educated guesses about the various information you want to include with your images. The title of the piece, the name of the artist, the program's materials used, the dimensions, even if they're just pixel dimensions. It's understandable that some information might not be available for all images, but if you can't find any information about an image, you can't use that image. Because we, it's just kind of sharing something without any context, and we want to build our understanding and our context. Each group will also turn in a one-page curatorial essay for the presentation. That does not need to be a separate piece of paper, but it can. It can just be a slide in the presentation. But this is where you write the equivalent of one to two pages, or just one full slide, where you argue the reasons for your topic. You know, what you find interesting about your topic, why you care about it, why your audience should care. And each group is required to have a different theme. So you can get one point for each of these criteria. You can get half a point for each of these criteria, or you can get zero points for these criteria. And they're kind of listed in priority, though you get the same amount of points for each of them. So the first priority is finding images to share. 
you know, 10 to 15 images and putting them in a Google Slides presentation. Some students still really like using PowerPoint. If you do, that's fine. I'll show you how you can copy your PowerPoint into Google Slides. But we're going to present it through Google Slides so everyone has access, everyone's able to contribute, and everyone sees it the same way, which is impossible with PowerPoint. Uh, the second most important thing that you also get a point for is that you give information with your images. So as you're finding things and you're sharing them with your group, you don't want to just give the images. You want to give like the link to where you found them with information about them. Though this is a presentation, not a paper, so I don't need MLA citations. I don't need a bibliography. But some students find it really helpful for their group and for their presentation to put a little list at the end of their slides with the different sites that they found because then you can always go back to them. Uh, your curatorial essay. This is just where you use writing. The good writer of your group, possibly, explains and argues the theme of the show. It is, It can basically be a substitute for an introduction to your presentation. You can just kind of hit the high points of that when you're introducing your topic to the class instead of just jumping right into images. And then those are the deliverables. The images, the image information, and the essay. You get points for being organized and clear that the person who's speaking for the presentation, that's walking us through the slides that last between 10 to 15 minutes, knows what they're saying, <laughs> you know, knows the information and that everything is organized together. Like the right information is right with the right images. And there's a few different ways you can do that. And then how do you get your fifth point out of five points? You have to do some extras. These are not extra credit. These are expected extras, but you get to decide what they are. So it's where you get to be creative. You can do things like include animation, tutorials. You can have a musical soundtrack that goes with the theme, helps us remember the theme. You can even bring in souvenirs or handouts, things to pass around. Uh, you want to be creative. You can be wearing themed clothing that fits the theme of your presentation, like if you're presenting on movie posters, you know, digital art in movie posters. You could all be wearing merchandise from your favorite movies or something, you know, and it'll help us remember. Now, here's the point. How do you get that extra point, or not the extra point, the fifth point, the over and above point? You have to have two different modalities of extras. So if you only have video clips in your presentation, video isn't required, it's an extra, but you'd only get half of that fifth point. So you'd have to have videos and something else in order to get the full point. And I have some examples. So. The biggest tip is to pick a topic and theme that everyone finds interesting. The problem is no group can present on the same thing. And the most popular themes by far in the last few years have been these two. So I'm taking these ones off the table so that groups don't argue between them. One is 2D digital animation. Not because it's not interesting, not because it's not great, but because I have a really good past student presentation to share with you that goes through it. So the research has been done. The next is 3D modeling for video games. That doesn't mean you can't do 3D modeling for other things. I have a group from the morning class doing just all different types of 3D printing. So it's a wide open world, but you have to go beyond 2D digital animation, beyond 3D modeling for video games. But let's look at these examples. First example, this was in uh, the past when I actually had students print these up, print up an image list, print up a curatorial essay, and hand them in. And you can still do that, but I'll also just accept it in a slide, right? What's nice about having a separate image list is that this is like your script for your presentation. It tells you which uh, information is in which slide. And that frees you up in your slides to not having to flood them with a lot of information because you can just tell us the information as you present it. You can also see they have a little GIF extra animation here showing us the, the character design uh, moving, show us the process, all by different artists to showcase of storyboarding, a nice little video here of animatics. I, can, I treat GIF and video content as the same kind of extra, right? It's still a moving extra. And even if you have 20 of these, it's still just worth half an extra's point because <laughs> it's all the same modality. But this relates directly to what we're doing with our GIF animation. This is a really incredible sequence from Avatar The Last Airbender 
So to get to see the animatics just done as kind of a GIF animation in previs is really impressive. And then they talk about the whole process. They're helping us understand it through these different examples. Now, they're not just pulling these images out from nowhere. They are telling us where those images come from and who the artist is and what studio created them and what their pixel dimensions are so that they're really clear on what they're showing us and why. Goes through the whole process. On and on. And then they did this and they asked me about it as their extra extra besides just videos. They actually had a GIF animation and they created their own process example. So they tried to apply what they learned and made a little animatic. So I treated that as a separate extra because that's like personal testimonial. I tried this out. And they could have done that in different ways. They could have made little flip books. Or, or passed a flip book around. We even just brought in uh, the art of their favorite Miyazaki movie, right? And brought that in. Or the art of Frozen and passed that around. That would be a, an extra too, like something physical. Okay, the next example. And these are all in Google Slides. The next example, same sort of thing, just a one-page curatorial essay, just argues the theme. You can read through this and see what they were thinking. And then here they give the information, and then I thought this was clever, though not required. They also gave the links. So they just shared this internally as they were creating this with their group members so that everyone had a, a direct link as access. And then their presentation is pretty straightforward. You know, they have a computer literate person that put it all on a template. Doesn't matter if you use a template or not, but it can clean things up. And then they just put their image list information in each slide. So you don't need both. You need the information, you need the images. You can do it this way. You can do it this way. You can do it both ways, but, but you'll get full credit as long as you have the information with your image. Okay. But it makes it pretty easy to put the information just alongside the image. A lot of still images here to showcase 3D modeling. So this is different than 2D digital animation. This is 3D modeling for video games. And so they have to kind of explain to us what 3D modeling is through their essay and then through their examples, whether they're for environment or for character or for props or even for um, like 3D sculptures that are generated from those 3D models of those video game characters. And so they do that with an extra, which is a little embedded video. Notice it's only a minute and 56 seconds because you don't want to go more than 15 minutes for sure. Preferably closer to 10 and it will, this will take you through the process. But that's just one modality of extra, right? So if you look at when they actually presented, they also had what's, what I called here a polymer clay handout. So they actually gave every student a little bit of Sculpey clay, which is a plastic based clay. And they just walked us through how to sculpt Kirby. Very simple to sculpt Kirby as a 3D model. And then talked about how you can scan that, turn that into a 3D model to do a 3D video game character. All right. So how do you pick your topic? So you go to the last part of the module 8 or unit 8. And you'll see the assignment sheet. You'll see some possible topics. And you can also always add on to these with your own ideas. You'll see a video showing how you can make a Google Slides link. And then you'll see all of your groups, especially if I'm in the right class. You'll see all of your groups, which are still largely intact. <laughs> so we go to unit modules. You go to group presentation. You can also find it directly under assignments. And underneath your groups, we have blue group here, Alyssa, Edgar, and Sophia. You're going to put your topic of choice right there. And you can discuss it first. We have gray group. We have Andres and John. You're going to put your group topic right there. We have green group. We have Thomas and Mike. Uh, Thomas, you get to have a lot of say in what you think it should be, right? 
what your group presentation topic will be, and you put it right there. 